Good afternoon. Um, Alex and I are thrilled to be here today. And um, we are really looking forward to um, sharing with you exactly how I go about this. So as Alex said, um, I wanted to develop a, a project based on something I'd done at the university level. So a little bit um, about our inspiration. When I was at the University of Puget Sound, I had a great administration. And in that administration, they would take um, any idea that you had and try to make it work. So what I did is I asked them to keep my class size at 10. This is a money losing project for the university. And they agreed. And I got one of my corporate partners in my lab, um, Crocs in this case, to send a vice president, a developer, a designer, um, head of marketing for a full week. And they spent a week with my kids. And my kids were allowed in that week to design a product. The product was then taken um, by the designer to uh, China, and it was developed. They brought it back by hand so we wouldn't have to do the shipping, and then we tested it. But with 10 students, this is a pretty easy thing to do. And when you develop and you come here, and suddenly I have 78 students. Um, how do you keep all of those students engaged in something? So this was kind of um, where I was going. Uh, with uh, how, do I, how do I take something, an award-winning um, class, and how do I make that class uh, something that was going to uh, inspire students who are much younger? So um, last year, I decided to put out a call to my old graduates. And I'm an old woman, so I have lots of kids, and they're not kids anymore, they're in their 40s. Um, I have lots of people out there doing things. And so what I decided I would do is I would let the students in each class interview three people. And they could interview these people and decide on a project. And what that person got, um, let's click on Chase's. And so in Chase's case, for instance, Chase has a company called Sway. Chase graduated in 2006. He went to Austria with me to present. He's a, Ah, so engaging. He's an engaging young man, positive, funny, smart. The kids interviewed him, didn't want to interview anybody else, so they were done. And so they grabbed Sway. And with Sway, it's the only concussion protocol in the United States that's approved by the FDA. So it's essentially being run in all high schools and, and all professional sports. And he wanted to know if you had uh, an, it on an iPhone and you were doing reaction time or balance, was that the same as doing it with a mini iPad or an iPad? So he said, can you tell me the answer to this? And he's asking the kids to run all these studies, but in the end what he gets is my knowledge for free. So he's, he's a willing character and the class is a willing character. So about four times during the year, the kids would store up questions and Chase would Skype in with us and engage them and we would get answers. But they all got the app down on their phone and they ran home and was anybody here? Was anybody tested last year? Kids, uh, parents? Uh, grandparents, we, we hit y'all, okay? So we got this really great project. Um, and then um, the second group chose Chris. And Chris has owned four businesses now, bought and sold them. And at the current time, he was doing uh, something called laser light low level therapy. And it is to reduce pain and injury in professional athletes, mostly done with professional athletes. And the manufacturer says to do it for four days, but he said, you know, is there a difference? If I do five, six days, am I gonna get a reduction in pain still? So should I keep doing it? So there's a certain set of skills that we needed to do and learn in the classroom in order to test it. So with that, the kids needed to learn something about how cells work and how cells reproduce, and how injury works, and how pain works. So they did a lot of reading in the original research. I was a little worried at this at first, but with you know careful stepping through it, the students caught right on. And then the third project is a project I thought was going to go really well, and it didn't. Um, it wasn't a failure, but it wasn't as engaging as the other two projects. And um, I had Mike Bond, he was my first thesis student, um, and his wife, Laura, um, they work for the United States Olympic Committee um, in ski and snowboard, and they have a problem where when you test um, an Olympic athlete, they're always going to be in the 99th percentile physically. So no matter what you do, everybody tests it the same. But when you're standing in a room full of Olympic athletes, where do you rank now? 
So we needed to develop new standards for just Olympic athletes. And so I thought the kids would really catch on to this, and Mike gave us virtual tours of the Olympic Center. Um, he did, and he's, he's, he's a, a great guy, and his wife is even more engaging. And we just couldn't get it to take. And we couldn't get it to take because the data was too hard for the kids to understand exactly what they were collecting. So I learned a lesson, okay? So everything has a failure and everything has a success. So um, from this, um, I wanted to do a project this year. And the first group I offered the project to was a group, um, it was my sixth period, I think, and I, and, or my seventh period, and I said, um, you know, I gave them all these choices. And whenever you give my students choices, they always choose the baby tortoises. Okay, so we always, so all year long I've been dealing. So then when they chose that, then my sixth period wanted it, and then my third period wanted it. So pretty soon I was just doing baby tortoises morning, noon, and night for, for a year. Um, this is one of my passions. I am, uh, I volunteer in the Galapagos as I retired from the university. Um, I said I would give them six months over three years. I'll complete that this summer, probably continue to go. Um, I go and I just work at the center in the morning. In the afternoon, I manage the data set. So I manage and make release um, protocol uh, for who gets released, when we take them, how much it's going to cost. I kind of do the budgeting and the, and the how, do we, how do we get uh, a list, an accurate list, to see who's being released. So um, I thought better than hearing from me. So I had three different groups doing it. So I did three different breeds. There's four different groups. So I have 12 projects going on at any given time. So when Tommy comes to me and says, you know my project, and they start talking, my eyes glaze over. Okay, because I'm like, I don't know what tortoise you're talking about, nor what year. So you had to preface every time you started to talk to me exactly what you were talking about. So um, I thought it was really interesting. It was a really great project um, with some great results. So I thought, better than hearing it from my perspective, it might be great to hear it from one of my students. So Alex is going to tell you a little bit about his project um, and how it went and what he learned from it. Okay, thank you. So I was, I'm a 12th grader, I'm a senior, and I'm a student of Heidi Orloff uh, for statistics. And well, first, the first semester for me was coming to class with this teacher who kept wearing tortoise earrings and tortoise necklaces and kept talking about the Galapagos and tortoises. I didn't really understand what that was going to build to, but as I started to learn all these statistical terms, correlation, statistical variance, analysis of variance, etc. I started to realize how these had some real life applications. But far from this being your regular math class where you just take two classes, then a quiz, two classes, then a test, uh, the whole semester we were building towards this final project in which we were learning how the math we were doing in class could apply to the real world. So what I did, being the case study for Dr. Orloff's approach to learning, was apply what we learned in class to the Galapagos tortoise. And this was a great experience because it showed how what I'm learning in class and what I'm learning about numbers can be applied to the real world. And what we did was work with uh, Cinco Cerro tortoises, which are a species of Galapagos tortoise. And we had to get a regression formula and work with correlations to see how they're growing. And although this might sound boring and maybe just number-based, what was really interesting for me is that it showed how um, with these formulas you could help uh, centers, the conservation centers, know when they have to release the tortoises and for them to be safe uh, outside of the conservation centers. And this is important because it saves a lot of money. And really this was a great experience because you kind of, in the classroom, you feel like you're doing something that goes beyond your classroom and that's going all the way to Ecuador and the Galapagos. And it's also a great experience because we had to do research and we had to learn. So from just the teacher being the, fan the fanatic of tortoises in the classroom, we all kind of grew into them. Uh, because the, the project consisted of having to look at the literature that existed. So we had to look at how in 1974 there were only 400 tortoises left and how today the research centers are, going, are having e uh, over 250 released every year. So that really shows how that's changing and learning from Dr. Orloff and how she's been able to help these centers is fascinating. Uh, the research project also consisted, uh, it was mainly two parts, it was this uh, poster that you can see here, which isn't made by me, it's my Cristian Lozano. I'm artistically challenged, so 
Um, I, but the paper is mine. And in the paper, I have an abstract in which I explain what my paper is. I look at the literature. And then I cover the methods of how I, how I went about doing this. But more importantly for this, uh, this was really important because it teaches students skills that they're going to have to use in the real world and when they go off to college. So I feel that, that for a lot of my classmates, this was the first time they were doing a full-blown research project in which they had to have citations, which weren't from Wikipedia. They had to come up with good sources. They had to cite their images. They had to come up with the right format. And this really was a great experience. We had to combine graphs and numbers. And there, there's also this part called the discussion in which you talk about how your numbers and how all of that applies to the real world. Which in the end, I think, is what Dr. Orloff is trying to do with her teaching style, is showing students how, through project-based learning, you can, what you do in class does have applications toward the real world. And that really does motivate us. I know it, it motivated me. It motivated a lot of my classmates, knowing that whatever we're doing isn't just within the classroom and that we can see it outside and in the real world. <laughs> okay, so um, something we avoided to, uh, showing you was the statistics on this. Um, really the model, whatever the kids choose, I can take any unit uh, if I have the units developed ahead of time. So you develop all your, your, your work has to be done before you start teaching the class. So in order to engage the students, you have to be finished on day one. Then you make your syllabus from there. Whatever the kids choose, I work backwards from what I hear the experts say they need. I work backwards and then I only expose them to a certain path through the statistics. So each class goes at a little different rate and a little different, um, different statistics that they're exposed to. You have to be um, willing to adjust on the fly. So when things start to go wrong, you're able to kind of push something in and something else out and being able to adjust to the, the students and what they can do. And I think Alex is a, a great example of what we can produce at, at the high school level here. Thank you. Thank you.